Hello, and thanks for tuning in to M Compass Media. It's Thursday, the 27th of January, 2022, and I'm your host, Finbar Markey. This week, Western mainstream media has really upped the war propaganda and rhetoric against Russia. Mainstream media are suggesting that Russia is on the verge of invading Ukraine and that Western states are willing to intervene to, to defend or to protect this uh, Ukraine against this alleged uh, attack that's coming. I'm joined with photojournalist Dean O'Brien, who has reported from Ukraine in the past and has significant links with people both in Ukraine and in the independent people's republics of Donbass, which are really the areas that are at the centre of all of these issues. Dean, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. Dean, just so that our audience can be confident that they're not talking to somebody who's never been to Ukraine or doesn't know anything about it, could you give us a little bit of your history with, with Ukraine and, and that over the last few years? Yeah, I mean, I've been traveling to Ukraine for about 13 years now. Um, originally, I was at, when I was at Coventry University doing my degree, a photography degree, I was in Ukraine. I was documenting social change, the, this change between sort of like capitalism, communism. They were coming out of the Soviet Union. So it was looking at these sort of contrasts, really. And then in 2014, you had what they call the Euromaidan revolution. Uh, this is where I witnessed... Um, with my own eyes, the Western interference and the influence that they had over Ukraine. Um, a coup was staged that overthrew a legally elected government. And what that did then threw the country into a civil war that we see today, 14,000 people killed and rising, eight years of war. And it's not, it's not the, the thing that the media or mainstream media, at least are talking as if there will be a conflict and there really is a conflict there and it's been happening for a long time and you have been one of the more prominent uh, journalists that are getting images and getting people's stories of that conflict out there. Um, in terms of the mainstream media narrative at the moment, uh, it, according to it, Russia has just suddenly started to get aggressive to Ukraine and is wanting to attack Ukraine. Can you give us a little bit of a more detailed background about the independent people's republics, their involvement in this, and what, what, what's really going on? Because my understanding is that uh, the Russia has said it, it has no intentions of invading Ukraine, but it would be willing to defend the independent people's republics in the Donbass region. Could you maybe fill us in on, on those details a little bit? Yeah, OK. So to just put it basically... For eight years, Ukraine has been shelling their own citizens, their own people. Uh, many are saying it's genocide. They've been shelling the people in the east because they culturally see themselves as Russian. Ethnically, they speak the language. Uh, in the east, they've always leaned more to Russia. It, it's just the way things are. Now, for eight years, they fended for themselves. They've got their own militia units, their own soldiers, and they've been looking after themselves for the past eight years. Now, for the past couple of years, there has kind of been an acceleration in people being, uh, they, they have got their own passports, Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic passports, but they're not officially recognised by most of the countries around the world. So these people were then given the opportunity to um, sacrifice their Ukrainian passports and apply for Russian ones, which many of them have done, because either way, they've got no way of kind of renewing their Ukrainian passports anyway, because they're not part of Ukraine anymore. So, so just, just to go back a little bit, just so people understand, there was a plebiscite or there was a vote or a referendum, whatever you'd like to call it, uh, within those regions, which are connected to the Russian border that, that were Ukraine. And they took a vote to separate and become independent people's republics. So that's, they're, they're the areas that we're talking about. Sorry, continue on there, Dean. Sorry for yeah. interrupting. So you've got the two areas, Lugansk People's Republic and Donetsk People's Republic. But both of those regions were offered uh, recently the opportunity to have Russian passports and this is a real game changer because many of people took that opportunity so technically what we're looking at now is Russian citizens that are being shelled. Now Vladimir Putin regardless of what Western media say I can't see him going in there I'm sure he would have gone in there before now but what I can see him doing is if Ukrainian forces go in there and cause a slaughter which is what they will do because as they enter the, the Donbass republics they're going to be fighting sort of villagers, miners. Th these are people that have professional jobs just to take up arms to defend their region. Once they start that slaughter, that genocide on, on Russian passport holders, that's when Vladimir Putin will go in. I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure of that. 
He'll go in to defend those citizens. But that hasn't happened yet. They are doing shelling on a daily basis, killing people. But it, it's nothing like what they've got planned if Ukraine do move forward. I was um, my reading suggests to me that Zelensky, the current president of Ukraine, was elected on a platform more of trying to find a peaceful solution to the issue with the independent people's republics. And that since then, his position has become more hardline with pressure from internally and externally. And externally, it's NATO uh, and the United States. But internally, my understanding is that it's, it's extremist right wing groups that are, are pushing this issue. My, I, my understanding also is that one of the ministers of the interior or a very senior guy within the interior who, who's con who has to look after the, the independent republic issue is actually as right wing as you can get and is a member of a military group himself, a right wing military group and a Nazi group being essentially. Um, do you think that the over lately the influence of the right wing in Ukraine has increased or? Yeah. I mean, just to, just to throw some more pure confusion into this, we have to remember uh, President Zelensky is Jewish as well. And yet the Ukrainian government has been backing these far right groups. And when I'm, when I'm talking far right, we're not talking about people that kind of cough under their breath and talk about immigration or anything like that. We're talking about people that are doing Nazi salutes in the streets. They're having torchlight parades. We're talking full on stuff that you could never get away with in any European city in the world, in, in Europe, basically. You'd never get away with those kind of torchlight parades, Zeke Heilin. And yet in Ukraine, they allow it and they're backing it. And Zelensky's Jewish and he's still allowing this to happen and financing it. But obviously, um, th th this, this just adds to the confusion of what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. Yeah. Um, in terms of how the Ukrainian people and the, the links that you have there, uh, my understanding is that there was, a, there was the Minsk agreement and that that agreement sought to find, again, a peaceful uh, as much as possible amicable solution to, to what's happening here. My understanding is that the Ukrainian government have refused to participate, I've signed up to it, but have refused yeah. to participate in, in any negotiations with Minsk. And if it is a case that the people of Ukraine really don't want this drama and really don't want to be used as a puppet for NATO uh, shenanigans now and into the future, um, then it's up to the people of Ukraine to voice that in some way. Uh, uh, what's, what's their opinion from, from your point of view, the people you've been speaking, speaking to both in Ukraine and in the independent people's republics? Both peoples I've been speaking to on both sides, all they're talking about is peace. This warmongering seems to be coming from outside. There's an external influence from the West. America are pushing it. The UK are pushing it. The only people that seem to have seen any sense in this is, is Germany, who are refusing to send any lethal aid. They're sending helmets, and that's it. But um, the people on both sides want peace. Their problem is they've got a president that won't go for peace. Zelensky will not sit down with the leaders of the Donetsk and Lugansk self-declared People's Republic. He's refusing to. So the only way we're going to get a peace agreement is if they have a change of president which, bizarrely enough, there was another coup. They may well get one. But he's in office for another couple of years yet anyway. Where do you think that coup would come from? Do you think it would come from, from those elements that we discussed earlier or from more passive elements? Um, it could... People are getting impatient in Ukraine with this now. You, you have got some, obviously, that want the, the forces to go in there and try and retake Donbass. But they also know that if that happens, Russian forces will be going in. So I think it could come um, from just your average Ukrainian. They, they want to get the president overthrown. And that could happen. Is the danger, does the danger exist that, OK, we've got these people who are not just self-proclaimed neo-Nazis, but idealise the rise of the Nazi party in Germany, most probably, and uh, noted the false flag operations carried out by the Nazis to create situations so that they could invade countries. Uh, is this on a knife's edge? It just takes a small group, does it, of, of extremists to, to tip this over the edge? Oh, it does. I mean, you have to remember now, these far-right groups are their kind of independent militias, if you like, that in the early days, they kind of, uh, I suppose, drove back the rebels in, in rebel separatists from some areas, such as Slavyansk and places like that. Now, the Ukrainian government, in a way, feels indebted to them. Uh, so they are rearming these. 
And these guys are in charge of powerful weapons. I mean, and they're fully armed. And these are extreme far right. And that's a real big danger. It is. What are your predictions as a final question, Dean? And um, what do you think? And I know it's really, really hard to predict, but considering the major ramp up over the last last week, I, I almost went into a panic thinking that, oh my goodness, this is it. They really I've never seen the Americans ramp it up so fast, so quick. Yeah. It could be all hot air in the long run. What's your predictions? Do you know what? We've, we've heard this so many times about Ukraine are planning an invasion. It's coming any day now. Um, I think this is going to drag on. I think it'll drag on for a long time. Often these these conflicts, especially in that part of the world, can drag on for years and years. Um, like I've said, there's no way Putin will go in there, I don't think, until Ukraine go for that final push. They'll create a bloodbath. It, it, it will it will be incredible. And Putin will have to go in. Uh, what might be a game changer is that today, um, well, or yesterday, actually, the, the Russian Federation did say that there's a possibility they would arm the militants in, in Donbass uh, with more modern equipment. Because at the moment, the, the Ukrainian forces have been given javelins, they've been given drones, they've got some very, very high tech equipment from Britain and the USA. So um, if Russia do decide to send more equipment to Donbass, more modern equipment, that could be a bit of a game changer as well. But I think it's going to drag out. I don't see a, a full-scale war coming anytime soon. A yeah, bit of a bit of a, a micro arms race going on in that area. Just on a side to, to to that, is it a case that these are this is this has been given? You know that it's aid, or really are these sales of arms, but that to be paid for into the future? Are you aware of what the facts are behind that? No, I'm not. To be honest, all we know is that say America are sending X amount of so much million pounds worth of aid, but it does it doesn't clarify uh, normally in the papers whether whether that's to be paid for or not. I'm sure one way or another, Ukraine have got an agreement with America anyway that we don't know about. OK, I've got a, I've got a feeling that has to be paid for. But that's not something that we could investigate into the future. Dean O'Brien, the man with his ear to the rail in Ukraine. Thanks for joining us this evening. I hope to speak to you again soon. Thanks, Finbar. Thank you for inviting me. No problem, Dean.